Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of my proposed future Japanese tank tech tree series. Um, I've actually recorded the episode itself, I'm just doing the intro and conclusions um, and I've sort of decided I'll do this in two parts. In this part I'll do the type um, tier 1 to tier 2, next episode tier 3 to tier 5. Now this episode was relatively easy to do because most of my books dealt with um, these sorts of um, tanks and the guns they used. but. Um, the next episode is quite a bit harder because um, none of my books had the guns listed. All the sources I used uh, disagreed about what penetration characteristics they had. Um, even in this episode with the 47mm gun, um, it was quite confusing. One, Some sources saying 40mm penetration at 500m, others saying 65 So, you know, just to let you know, there may be some discrepancies and I do have to sort of um, guess, do a lot of guesswork um, involved with some of the guns, unfortunately. Now before I forget, um, because I forgot to mention this in the last episode, there is actually a part of the War Thunder forum dedicated to Japanese tanks. Um, you know, I'll leave a link to that. Um, the people there seem very knowledgeable about Japanese tanks. They've actually produced their own Japanese tank tech tree, um, if you want to look at that. Um, you know, you could probably learn quite a bit about Japanese tanks from there. So, you know, if you want to find in more information about Japanese tanks, that's a good place to look. Um, but without further ado, let's get straight into the episode. Now the first tank we're looking at is the Type 89i Go. Now this was actually quite an early tank. It was The first ones were built in something like 1931. And there was two basic variants. There was the A variant and the B variant. Now really the only difference is, is that one had a petrol engine and one had a diesel engine. Now the diesel engine one was um, quite a bit faster, something like 16 miles an hour, while the... Um, petrol engine one could only manage barely 10 miles an hour or slightly less than that and looking at the production figures in um, one of my books it does seem the type b the diesel engine version was the most produced one 291 compared to the a's 113. now the main role of the type 89 was to support um, the infantry so it didn't particularly have a good gun for dealing with enemy tanks it had a low velocity 57mm Type 90 cannon. Now I've had a look online and in my books and from what I can tell this had pretty bad penetration um, characteristics with armour piercing, something like 20 millimetres at 500 metres which is pretty bad but apparently there was a heat um, round produced for it or I don't know if it was like widespread or if it was just developed and not put into production but there was a heat round for it um, which could penetrate 55 millimeters of armor, so it could potentially do quite well for its, um, you know, if it's a low battle rating. It would have to be a low battle rating because it's a very early tank. Um, it also had a secondary armament, two 6.5 millimeter machine guns, and the armor. Um, remember, it was produced in 1931. Um, is nine to 17 millimeters of armor, which is pretty good. Um, you know, it can. I mean, maybe not against enemy tanks, but it could block most small arms fire. And, you know, when it was produced, it wasn't really expected to beat any tanks. Um, of course, by 1940, they were quite obsolete, um, by which point most of them were retired retired, and, um, you know, withdrawn from service. But a few did end up in combat, and from what I understand, didn't fare particularly well. Lastly, um, it had four crew, which is a pretty big improvement on what the light tanks had at the same time. Um, it had a commander who doubled as a gunner, a loader, a driver, and a bow machine gunner. So unlike with some of the light tanks, you won't, you know, losing one crew won't, mem you know, losing one crew member won't kill your tank. So already it's got one advantage over the light tanks um, that Japan fielded, or that would be in War Thunder. Now, where would it actually go on the tech tree in War Thunder? Um, looking at the tech tree itself. Now we've got the Panzer IV, which also has a heat round of about 80 millimeters. Um, assuming the Type 89 gets its heat round and gets 55 millimeters penetration, that would allow it to penetrate practically anything. Uh, the Panzer IV C um, is a 1.3, and again 80 millimeters penetration. So probably it could. I'd probably say 1.3 at the lowest, because obviously it's got a quite high penetrating gun, but. No, not much higher than that, um, you know, maybe 1.7 is the very highest, you know, very, very highest, I mean, because it has got pretty bad armour. Um, I suppose there's a bit of a glass cannon if it gets the heat round, but um, uh, you'd get, I assume you'd, 
you'd get both variants. I think both variants would be good to have. Um, the Panzer II, that's a reserve tank. Or you've got one as a reserve and one as a, a not reserve, although they're the same battle rating. So maybe something similar to that, but a 1.3. Uh, you know, I think that would be pretty good for the tank. Um, and it would make a very good starting point for the Japanese medium tanks. Now, the next tank on our list is the Type 97 Chiha medium tank. Now, starting off with armament, it's apparently very similar to the Type 89, a 57mm low velocity gun. But this is a Type 97 instead of a Type 90. As, as far as I can tell, the, the only difference really is, is that it has a ever so slight increase in barrel length, um, 18, length 18.5 rather than 18.4. Uh, other than that, it seems to be very similar. Uh, penetration 20 millimeters at 500 meters with armor piercing, with high explosive anti-tank heat, it has um 55. So pretty similar gun. So we've established that. Uh, now armor. One of my books lists it as six. Um, sorry, eight to 25 millimeters. My other book, uh, Japanese Tanks 1939 to 45 by Stephen J. Saloga, um, gives a slightly more in-depth look at the armor. It says uh. The thickest part, the thickest armor on the tank was a gun mantlet at 33 millimeters, and the turret sides at 26 millimeters. Uh, the remaining panels range from 20 millimeters on the whole superstructure to 12 millimeter on upper surfaces, and was entirely riveted. So, not particularly great armor. So it's, it's kind of similar to the Panzer fours uh, and Panzer threes. I think they had like. Uh, 30 millimeter side armor. This has 26 millimeter side armor on the turrets, at least. Um, maybe a bit under unarmored um, in other places, but it should do. You know, it's reasonably well protected compared to the light tanks. Let's put it that way. Now for crew, um, my book has it listed as having four crew. So, but it, well, it doesn't say exactly who the crew are. So I'm going to guess, like with the Type 89 uh, driver, bow machine gunner. Uh, loader and then commander slash gunner so again four crewmen which you know makes your tank harder to kill and you know more replacements if one of them does get one of your crewmen gets knocked out so overall this does seem like a pretty good tank um now where would i put it battle rating wise um it's got better armor like i said something like 26 millimeters on the turret sides um and the same penetration as the um type 89 55 millimeters now the Panzer IV F1 is um 2.3, but that seems a little too high. Maybe Panzer E, Panzer E's battle rating's about two. I think that's probably the Chiha should probably be there about yeah about there at the highest. Um, really no higher than that. Um, I think they both have roughly the same muzzle velocity. Even uh, Panzer IVs is 450. The the Chiha's is 350, so it's got lower muzzle velocity, but so maybe 1.7, 2.0, somewhere around there. No higher than tier 1, though. Um, and it, again, it will make a pretty good Japanese tank. Um, you know, if you just have to play them a bit like the Panzer IVs um, that are already in-game. Now, before we move on to the next tank, I've actually got some pictures of the Type 97 in War Thunder already. Um, I should explain. Basically, they're the ground attack targets for uh, arcade and realistic battles. Um, and so far on Desert Coast and um, Port, you've got the Time 97 as some of the ground targets. Um, you can see it's reasonably well modelled. Um, in the next picture, uh, here it is, you can see the turret's a bit asymmetrical because of that rear machine gun. Um, this isn't an indication of how well done the tanks are, obviously. This is just an external model, but I thought it would be interesting to show to you anyway. Um, it shows that, you know, Gaijin have at least put some time into doing the external models at least so they've obviously researched it a little bit um you know i just thought we'd show you the um pictures now the next tank on the list is the type 2 hoi or hoi and i was really conflicted of where to put this in the tech tree um i kind of swayed to more towards it being in the tank destroyer line um ahead of the type 1 hoi or hoi um but reading up on it it does seem pretty clear it was a um similar to the Panzer IV, and I actually had it in the Tank Destroyer line until this episode, um, and I sort of, as I was doing the Pan, uh, the Panzer, the Type 97s, and saying how they were kind of similar to the Panzer IVs in a way, you know, it did sort of sway me towards it probably being a better fit in the medium tank line. Um, so, the stats for it, um, it had a 75mm Type 99 gun, 
Now, there was virtually no information on this gun. I didn't have anything in any of my books on it, and even looking online found virtually nothing. Um, in the end, I found one or two forum posts which were citing Japanese books, and they mentioned with a Type 2 high explosive anti tank shell it could do 100mm of penetration, which sounds reasonable, you know, basically the same as the Panzer IV. So, it seems like it would be quite a good, powerful little tank, um, you know, again, similar to the Panzer IV. Um, armour, it had about if I can find it, about 50 to 12 millimetres of armour, so reasonably well protected compared to the Type 97 Chiha, which remember only had about 33 millimetres maximum thickness, and that was around the gun mantle. It was also reasonably fast, about 27 miles per hour. Um, crew, um, from what I can understand, it had five crew, but I have no idea what they actually did. Um, I assume it's something like driver, bow machine gunner, because it had a secondary armament of 7.7 mm um, machine gun um, so driver, bow machine gunner, gunner, commander, loader, something like that um, I suppose that's that would make sense, that's the only way I can possibly you know I can't think who else could be there as a crewman, maybe a radio operator or something but um, I think it would be a good fit between the Type 97 Chiha and the Shinhoto Chiha, the upgraded Type 97 um, Again, it could possibly go in the type tank destroyer line, um, but it would probably have to go before the Type 1 Honey. Um, um, and I'll talk about more of that, that more in the tank destroyer episode, but, um, you know, it'd be out of chronological order, I think. And, you know, I think it does reasonably well in the medium tank line, um, now that I've had a chance to look at it better. Now, the next tank on our list is the Type 97 Shinhoto Chiha. Um, basically, it's a Type 97, but with a high velocity 47mm gun, so lower calibre, much higher muzzle velocity. Now as talked about at the um, beginning of the video, there are conflicting stats for the 47mm gun. Um, with um, apparently at 100 metres it could do between 55 and 70, obviously a big jump, um, or a big difference, um, or at 500, between, 500 metres between 45 and 65, or at 1000 between 35, or between 30 and 50. Obviously, this makes giving it a battle rating kind of hard because, um, you know, you, it's a bit hard to tell which vehicles it can penetrate and not. Um, the post-war testing kind of seems like the most reasonable ones. Um, 70 metres at 100 metres and, and 50 at 500, um, which would mean it could reasonably penetrate the rears and sides of a Sherman. So I think uh, probably a battle rating about three. Um, I wouldn't put it too high. I mean... Because oh, obviously it only has a 47mm gun, so 3 is the maximum battle rating I'd put it. It could probably go quite a bit lower than that if it really, if needed. But 3 is really the highest. It shouldn't be going against Shermans too regularly, though it should be. It would be able to hold its own reasonably well against them. Um, the armour of the Shinoto, as far as I could tell, was actually the same, more or less. Um, I can't see any references to it being changed or anything. Uh, speed still seems to be the same as if the Type 97 Chiha at about 24 miles an hour. So, yeah, it should be a reasonably good tank, and, you know, it we'll, shows how Japan is, or was, um, advancing its tanks, and I think it would be very good to have it in War Thunder. In case you're wondering, I believe the second of these tanks, the one at the back, is the Type 97 um, Shinoto, um, and the first, uh, first one is actually the tank we're looking at next, the Type 1 Chaihi. Um, which is also incidentally the first of the modern Japanese tanks that didn't really see any combat in um, World War II. Unfortunately, this also means it and other modern Japanese tanks aren't particularly covered in my books, apart from the one by Saloga that I ordered in specially. Um, but basically, the Type 1 Chaihi, it, it was an attempt to make the Type 97 Shinoto, or Type 97 in general, more modern, uh, you know, able to stand up in combat. So one of the major things they did was improve the frontal armour, thickened it to 50mm, and they used um, welding rather than riveting. Uh, they also gave it a more powerful engine, so it could actually take the additional armour. With the improved engine, it can actually make 27 miles per hour rather than um, 24, so it's actually got faster, even though it's got extra armour. Um, the main problem was it was still armed with that 47mm gun. Um, so again, it's going to have a lot of trouble dealing with enemy tanks, and while the armour is much improved, it would probably be a higher battle rating than the Type 97, so bigger guns it'll be going against, which will negate basically any advantages gained. 
which is why I think 3.3 is the highest battle rating this can go. It, it can't go any higher, um, otherwise it's going to be facing lots and lots and lots of Shermans. Um, I know this kind of seems unfair to be giving Japan all the lower battle ratings, but with most of these tanks, if you put them too high, they're just going to get slaughtered. So 3.3 is really the highest I would put it. Higher than the Type 97, but low enough to, you know, not be completely slaughtered and stand somewhat a chance at defeating enemies. So that's it for today's episode. Um, like I said, I'm doing this in two parts. Um, this was actually the easy bit to do. Um, it's the next episode where I really struggled um, trying to find accurate information on the various Japanese um, gun penetration characteristics. But um, I hope you enjoyed the episode anyway. Um, leave a like if you did like the episode. Subscribe if you like these sorts of videos. Uh, leave feedback. I can always do with more feedback. Maybe you've um, seen tanks that you think should be included on here. Maybe you think I've got information wrong or just want to give general feedback. But um, anyway, I hope you enjoyed the episode and I'll see you next time.